Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to do a spoiler-free review for Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. This is the first volume of what is supposed to be a duology where the scope is the Targaryen dynasty. From the start, when Aegon the Conqueror came to Westeros together with his sister wives and made these seven kingdoms into one, and that one kingdom of course he ruled, up until the end of the Targaryen dynasty, and that brings us just a couple of years slash decades before the events that start the A Song of Ice and Fire series. Now, because of course a lot of people have been burned before with an unfinished George R. R. Martin series, some of you might be hesitant to pick up Fire and Blood knowing that Volume 2 is not out yet and might never be. However, because the type of book that this is, I think that that wouldn't be a problem. You can very easily read this as a standalone and just be satisfied and that's it. And that's because, even though of course this is a fictional piece of work, this is set in the world of Westeros as an actual history book that is told to you by a maester who made this his life work to really delve into the Targaryen dynasty and to almost write a thesis of it, if you will. Now, because of that, because this is non-fiction, or it reads as non-fiction, it reads very different from the other fancy books that at least I have picked up. And that's a switch that you need to turn because it's definitely a little bit of an adjustment. Especially in the beginning, of course, this is a lot more fast-paced than what you would read if you read an actual fantasy book. This almost reads as a summary of things that happened over the course of hundreds of years. Something that might take 10 years in real life, it might get told here in just a page. If you have a battle in an actual fantasy book, this would take you chapters to get through, it would be told in detail, that person died, this happened here, it goes into the lives of these characters, of these soldiers, that doesn't happen here. It can be just one sentence, and then Aegon the Conqueror came with his dragon and he made sure that the war was won on his side. That's it you're not going to get anything more. So because it is quite fast paced, because you are just looking at this from afar almost, because you have this maester who is telling you this story, but he was never actually there. This was before he was born even. It's very difficult to get connected to the characters. It's almost impossible. If you're looking for a character driven story where you're at the edge of your seat and you don't know what's going to happen, and you're so afraid for the characters that you love and something terrible to happen to them, that's not really going to happen because you don't get the time to actually feel connected to them. And the scope of this work is very, very limited. It only deals with the Targaryens and what is important for the ruling of Westeros and for the current state when the Maester is writing this of Westeros. So any personal dilemmas that happens, any emotion, any maybe marital issues that did not have an effect on the ruling of Westeros, it doesn't get discussed here. Because of that, of course, this is, like I said, a very narrow scope and you don't really get extremely fleshed out characters, but I don't think that that is a flaw of the work. I think that that is a very deliberate choice of when you write a history book. However, where the characterization does shine through, in my opinion, is with the narrator, this Meister. Even though he tries to be as objective as possible, of course, this is a scholar, this is what he does, you can definitely see that he has some prejudices. And of course, he knows what's happening. He knows which battles are won by which sides. And I do think that this colors his judgment just a little bit, just in the choice of wording that he picks to describe certain things. When he has multiple accounts by maybe unreliable narrators, unreliable sources, He's very quick to say, well, I think that this is just too far-fetched. We're not going to go with this account, we're going to go with this one. So he gives you all of those different accounts, but you can see which one he likes more. And that is because he is a scholar, but he's also somebody who sees what the end result is. And I quite liked that. And it's not really breaking the fourth wall, but sometimes he does talk directly to the reader. And I quite enjoyed that little touch. Now, because it is a history book and because it only deals with the end result, sometimes he does say we do not know what happened there exactly, but we do know that it ended with this. It ended with the death of a dragon, it ended with the death of a lord. That's it. That leaves a lot of open space for interpretation, both for you as a reader to make up your own mind, but it's also very interesting to see what happens with adaptations, like House of the Dragon. It's very nice to see that if you treat that as canon, that this is actually the book of hundreds of years after the actual events. This is what we think that happened. This is what we actually know that happened. And then you have the show, which is in real time of those events. Well, maybe it's not always what survives throughout history. And maybe the actual accounts are quite different. So I really liked those different touches. Now, because it is so fast paced, as I said, 
it is difficult to get into. Because in the beginning, when we have Aegon the Conqueror, who comes to Westeros with his sister wives, there are a lot of houses that we don't really see in A Song of Ice and Fire, so these are all new players to us. And normally, in a normal fantasy book, that's already a lot to digest, that's a lot to try to remember. But when it is so fast-paced, and when you only see the snippets that are important for the ruling of Westeros, and you don't really see their personal lives, it's very difficult to keep them separate from each other, because they're not that unique. You have this one house, it's against Aegon. You have that other house, it's also against Aegon. How do you separate those two when that's the only information that you're actually getting, and you don't really feel connected to those characters? So definitely the beginning can be quite difficult to get into, but I felt after the first hundred pages, you're used to it, and of course, in the beginning, you meet all of those houses that you've never heard of, but after the first hundred pages, maybe a new house or a new player answers the scene, but it's not en masse as it was in those first hundred pages. So definitely something that you need to just bite the bullet and push through, and after that, it becomes a lot more enjoyable. However, I must say that I do not think that this is the type of book that a casual fan is going to pick up and enjoy. I think, of course, if you've read A Song of Ice and Fire, and if you are in love with this world, and you want to know more about this history, then this is the perfect book to pick up, and please do so. But if you're not in love with this world, if you want to try something by George R. R. Martin, and you're wondering where to start, please don't start here. Start with A Song of Ice and Fire, read that one. I think if you're a very big fan of the show, Game of Thrones, and you want to know more, and you don't want to read A Song of Ice and Fire because you already know the plot, then yeah, maybe pick up this one, but just be aware that I think that only diehard fans will be really interested in what happens in this works. Now, what I must say is that for me, at least, I found the first half more enjoyable than the second half, and this has probably a couple of different reasonings. First of all, we know that this is about the downfall of one of the biggest houses that Westeros or the world of Westeros have, has ever known. These are the Targaryens, and if you know A Song of Ice and Fire, if you have watched the Game of Thrones TV show, you know that the Targaryens are not really around anymore as a powerhouse. So of course something happened from them being the conquerors, being the absolute heroes and rulers, to the end. So this is a gradual downfall, and in the beginning they have dragons, they are almost very almost gods you could say they are so far removed from normal people from normal lords that it's just very enjoyable to read this they're also still very much related to old valeria while over the decades you could say they come closer to normal lords and normal people because first of all they have been living in westeros for longer but second of all their power definitely dwindles so i really liked reading about those very early time periods where they were still extremely powerful and the downfall and towards the end it felt like i almost had my dose of targaryen rule and it wasn't as enjoyable and as new as and as spectacular so that is something that i do want to note um what I often also get as a question is, should I start with Fire and Blood or should I watch House of the Dragon? And of course, at this point, I do think that most people, if you're interested in this world in any way, you probably would have seen House of the Dragon already. But then the question is, do I now read this book, waiting for season two, or do I first watch House of the Dragon and then read this book? Now, I think that there are arguments to be made for each side. However, I would say read this book because I just find it very interesting. And I've mentioned this before of this book is just what they know. And history, as we know, what gets remembered is what the victors want us to remember. And a lot of small snippets, a lot of nuances gets lost. This is, you could say, a summary of hundreds of years and only the very important things, only the dry facts get in this book. But everything in between, the reasonings why something happens, why something escalated, and the lies that have been told throughout history, that's not in this book, because that's something that that maester does not know. So it's very fun to read this, read this summary, and then go to the TV show and see how it actually happened. If you think that it's canon, then you see those differences, and that's quite nice. While if you've already seen the show, and then read a dry summary, I think that that will hit you differently, and that that would then not be the same. I think that if you first read the book, then watch the show, both of them are enjoyable and it does not diminish your enjoyment of the show. But if you first watch the show and then read the book, I do think that the book will hit in a very different way. So that was my review for Fire and Blood. 
I really enjoyed reading this one, but as I said, I do think that this is only for the diehard fans. And then just one question for the people who either read the book or watched the show, Team Green or Team Black? Please tell me, I'm Team Green, I was Team Green when I read the book, I was definitely Team Green when I watched season one of the show, but I do think that I'm in the minority in that case. As always, I do hope that you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye!